Hey guys, it's Rachel from The Littering Lamb, and today I'm filming my book haul. So these books are all from different places. I have another smaller book haul coming from Indigo, but these are basically books I've ordered in between late April and now. Some notes before I start filming. I've been trying to film this many times, and there's like a white orb that keeps following my face. I cleaned my lens, so hopefully that solves that. This is my Lego, and yes, my bookshelves, if you see behind me, are horribly arranged. Um, once I finish this online course this week, um, I am going to be t tackling organizing my bookcases. I just find it very overwhelming. Like I don't, I like organizing DVDs because they're all relatively the same size, but books aren't. Yeah, I guess you could collect all hardcovers, but like I like a deal. So it's kind of like DVDs. They don't have a slip cover. I don't really care. I like a deal. It's the product, not necessarily the packaging, though I do like pretty packaging. But moving on, so the first place I ordered a book from was Book Depository, which I've used before. This book took so long to get here. It's definitely because of COVID. It wasn't anything usual because usually it takes like seven to ten business days, like it says on the website for my location, which is Canada. Um, but I ordered Marriage Vacation by Pauline Turner Brooks. And this is a book from the TV show Younger. I just read the Younger book. And then I read the other book that was introduced in the TV show, I believe, the education of henry kane is a book title which i actually really enjoyed that book it was actually really surprised me for being a book derived from a tv show and i've seen um watch all the current episodes of younger it was finally available to stream in canada so i got to it and watched it. it's been something i've been wanting to watch for a while but it, you're unable to buy it even digitally in canada still but you can stream it now on amazon prime which I've been waiting to stream it for years or watch it somehow. I would have even bought it. Like, I just wanted to watch it really badly. So I was finally happy to be able to do so. This book, if I'm, if the description I'm thinking of is correct from the TV show, it's basically about a girl who, um, what's her name? Kate, who wants to kind of find herself. She's having a midlife crisis. So she kind of takes a vacation from marriage and goes to explore herself. I think it's Ella Vane of Eat, Pray, Love kind of explore, but not like all over the world and just her trying to find herself. It looks like a really good summary book. I really need to get back into reading this because I don't want to leave it shelved for too long because I read the other ones in succession after the show and I want to read this one soon. So my goal is to read that one this summer. Then my next two books came from Amazon. I typically don't order many books from Amazon unless they're used because I actually like a certain seller from Amazon for used books. The books come in good condition and they're cheap. Um, but these two books I bought just because I wasn't ready to make my indigo order. I wanted to wait till the book I wanted to pre-order went. I saw it at a lower price and then it went up $10 higher. So I was waiting till it went down. So I decided to order these books regardless on Amazon. The first one is The Ballads of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, which I've already read. If you're following me on Goodreads, you've seen I read this book. I wasn't going to read it as soon as I did, but my friend Denise was really wanting me to read it. So... I decided to get to it. She was making me really excited to read it. Um, and yeah, it was actually, I know it's getting controversial opinions, but I actually think like, yeah, did it need to be put in the universe? And it, would it affect the stories? Maybe not, but was it useful and gave more insight? Definitely. If you've read the original series, I definitely recommend rereading them first. That's what I did. But I also want to, next time I go about rereading them, read um, this one first and then read the other ones to see how the progression goes. I do have a few questions from this book, um, but I'm not going to get into those because I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah. Anywho, this is basically, in case you don't know, it's following President Snow as a young man, and it's him and his introduction to the Hunger Games and how he is working as a mentor for the Hunger Games. And then the next book I bought was Math Hacks, Cool Tips Plus Less Stress Equals Better Marks by Vanessa the Math Guru, Guru Vicaria. I've been listening to her podcast, Math Therapy, which I definitely recommend. It is based in Ontario, which is my province in Canada. So when they talk about curriculum, I like it because they don't go into depth about, in depth about curriculum, but I can relate to certain things because of it being my province and country because each province has their own education, like their own curriculum. So and I've been really loving her podcast, Math Therapy, because it's been teaching me a lot. You hear different people's experiences. It doesn't go into equations. It just talks about math and like the anxiety around math. I definitely recommend it. Even if you're not really super interested in math, there's definitely a lot you can learn and they're not going over concepts and procedurals. So it's nothing that's like out of anybody's realm that they can't understand. And they have people who love math, people who don't like math, people who are curious about math. 
really good. So I want to read her book and support her um, because I really like the way she talks about math and she's been featured on like CBC and yeah like what's the deal with fractions and it's like a very colorful visual guide so it's definitely one of those ones I'm going to be reading because I think I want to center my masters around math in some capacity. I have a learning disability in math for full dis disclosure um, but I've always worked through and I'm finding that I'm learning more and trying to learn this new way that they're teaching math which is like using different strategies and letting children play with concepts to learn rather than rote memorization. So I've been just reading up on that and always trying to improve my own skills because I am going to be teaching these subjects and obviously I feel qualified to teach these subjects but I always want to make sure I'm at the top of my game I have the best strategies for the students. Anywho, the next six books I actually bought from Book Outlet. I know Book Outlet has had some controversy lately surrounding the Black Lives Matter movement and like it's just a disgusting situation so these books were bought before this all happened just for full disclosure I wasn't going to not say where they're from but they're from there um I won't be going on that website because I've been watching a few videos about it and I yeah just if you want to learn more about what's happened in terms of book outlet um there's definitely some good videos out there all you have to do is put book outlet controversy or book outlet black lives matter and you would definitely see um what's going on so there. with that being said like i just wanted to have full disclosure there i don't think what they did was appropriate or right um and yeah i'm going to move on just to talk about the books now so the first book i picked up was the accidental beauty queen by terry wilson i just wanted like a light rom com -y type book and this was definitely it it's about a girl who is a twin and her twin sister suddenly can't compete in this pageant she's wanted to compete in for the preliminaries. So they switch places together. It's kind of a parent trap style uh, plot besides not trying to get the parents together, but the switching places. And it's kind of like all the stuff that happens from there. The twins are very different. The one that's in the pageants is very, like her pageants are her life. And the other one is a librarian and she's into reading and she's not into the glitz and glam. She doesn't really care about makeup. So it's interesting seeing the evolution and it was just a really good book. I really liked it. I've actually already read that one because I just wanted something lighter to read. Uh, the next book I picked up was Man vs. Math, Understanding the Curious Mathematics That Power Our World by Timothy Rebel. And this book is actually quite heavy. Um, so it's like, it's another one where it's like some pictures and graphics. Like it doesn't look like it's going to take me a hundred years to read. Um, but basically this is just like about mathematics and how they relate to the world around us because I think it's very important to learn more even real life context for myself because even I was in math class being like when I'm going to use this how does this relate to life and it's very interesting trying to find new ways especially using social media so um, it says from controlling a city's traffic to finding love spending money online to building a skyscraper the mathematics at play in our world is fascinating um, and yeah, trying to knock down the complexities of everyday math and show you how it works. So it says, could we solve traffic with an equation? How do algorithms control our news? And what is the secret behind encryption codes? So I'm interested in reading that one. The next one I got was How to Bake Pie by Eugenia Chang. And this book sounded really interesting because it has to do with baking. And I know a lot of kids love sweets, like myself. So it's interesting teaching math using recipes and all the different ways you can get around that. This book actually has recipes in it. And then it just talks about her experience of math and different ways to solve problems. It sounds really good. This is one that I was most excited about getting. That's why I placed the order sooner just so it didn't go out of stock. I really don't think it would have, but you know, just in case. Then I picked up All the Beautiful Strangers by Elizabeth Cle Clefon. And the thing that got me really excited about this was... Um, Cecilie von Zygasar, the author of the Gossip Girl series, actually put a little blurb that said lured me right in and kept me enthralled. And somebody else said something on Goodreads. I'm not sure if it was an author quote or that, but they said it's like Gossip Girl meets Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars is one of my favorite series of all time. The TV show is not the best. Wasn't a big fan. Watched it mostly because my cousin was watching and we, there's a way for us to bond again. Um, we spend a lot of time together, but it's like something that we both were watching every week. Um, together and Gossip Girl. I really love the TV show and I love the book series so instantly lured me in and it's another mystery. Um, 
So I'm just going to read the back of this one because I don't really remember too much the description because I ordered these a little while ago. So it says 2007. As a wife of billionaire real estate mogul Alistair Calloway, Grace Calloway's life looks golden. She has an Upper East Side penthouse, a sumptuous lakeside mansion, two lovely daughters, and a doting husband. What reason could there be for her to vanish without a trace? 2017. 17 year old Charlotte, Charlie Calloway, is bright, beautiful, and privileged just like many other students at New England's prestigious Knollwood Prep. At Knollwood, Charlie has found a sense of belonging to fill the emptiness left by her mother's disappearance. And this semester, she's been tapped by the A's, Knollwood's most exclusive and mysterious society. So it's like boarding school, mystery, related to Pruitt Liars, Gossip Girl, right up my alley. Um, I haven't heard too many people talk about this one, but I've also been kind of distant from BookTube because I found a lot of the people I've subscribed to are still reading YA, which is fabulous, but I'm kind of past that right now. So it's like finding people that aren't necessarily reading YA that are in line with my reading taste because um, I know definitely like my channel has well not only have I not been posting the past two years but before that's definitely taken a hit because I'm not reading YA anymore um, so yeah but I'm pretty sure that it would be considered YA I'm still reading a few I'm not against reading YA it's just I'm not as interested in it anymore unless it's like something really exceptional I might do a video on my discussion about that we'll see but I'm turning 25 this year and I've been reading YA since I was 10 and yeah. Anywho, um, the next book I picked up was A Mathematician Reads a Newspaper um, with a new preface by John Allen Polos. This book was actually published, I believe, I believe it was published the year I was born, 1995. So outdated a bit, but basically it's about a man who goes through this uh, newspaper. I don't know what newspaper it is. And he basically um, takes stories that may not seem to involve math at all and demonstrates how mathematical naivety can put readers at a distinct disadvantage. So whether he's using chaos theory to puncture economic and environmental predictions, applying logic to clarify the hazards of spin doctoring and news compression, or employing arithmetic and common sense to give us a novel perspective on greed and relationships. So it's basically like he takes, I'm just gonna run to a page, he takes like an article, so this one's called Candidates Contradict Each Other's Denials, Self-Reference, Intentions in the News, and just discusses it. And I thought it's really interesting, um, again, like a real life context, even though it is outdated, the articles, obviously. It's not like I read the articles, couldn't even read it, depending on when the newspaper came out, might not have been born. I was born in the seventh month. So <laughs> there'll be new articles to me, might be stuff I already know from the news if it's carried over, but I was excited to read that one. I get to that one. I haven't read any of these math books yet because I'm still working on my two. Um, hopefully in the next week or so I'll finish both of those and I can move on. The next book I bought in the last book in this book haul is the, the Rhythm Section by Mark Burnell. And this one was just turned into a film with Blake Lively and I haven't seen the film yet. I haven't heard too much about it. I'm not sure if it came out right before the pandemic broke or later last year. I cannot remember. But this book sounds really interesting. It's kind of a mystery. Um, so I'm just, and it's actually a series. I didn't know that. So if I like it, I'll have to pick up the other ones, but I'm just going to read a little bit of it. So it says Stephanie Patrick's life is destroyed by the crash of flight NEO 27. Her family was on board and there were no survivors. Devastated, her life spins out of control. She falls into a world of drugs and prostitution until the day she discovers that the crash wasn't an accident, but an act of terrorism filled with rage with nothing left to lose. She focuses on one goal, revenge. Um, when Stephanie is recruited by a covert intelligence organization, she sees a path to her goal. Young, smart, and alone, she's offered a deal. Undergo rigorous training and assume a new identity to act on behalf of the organization. So, it's not like a good thriller book, and it's been made into a movie, so that also intrigued me. But yeah, anyway, this was my book haul. Really excited to read most of these books. I'm going to be trying to do more reviews. Um, so if you've seen any of the books in this haul and you want me to do a review, definitely let me know. Uh, the only book I'm a bit iffy on is a new Hunger Games book, but if it, there's a request for it, I'll definitely try to do that. And yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.